Welcome back to In the Cards and Stars. I'm your host, Britt Madrid Mogensen, and today we're talking about Gemini season. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is such a fun, active season. I love Gemini energy, and this season has a lot of fun things happening. So I'm going to tell you guys some dates to put on your calendar so that you are informed, you know when to do what, and we're also going to talk about one of my favorite Geminis, Emma Chamberlain. She is the fashion correspondent for Vogue, but she started off as a YouTuber and vlogger specifically, and she is one of the most just honestly, one of the best examples of Gemini energy I've ever seen. She's a Gemini sun. And I even found a clip of her talking about her fashion sense. And this was like from a vlog three years ago. Oh yes, I did the digging. We're going to look at that clip and get inspired for Gemini season as far as style, fashion, what we need to know. And then we're going to do a little bit of tea spilling for entertainment purposes only. You know how we do here. We're actually going to look at the astrology of Emma Chamberlain and her breakup from Tucker Pillsbury, also known as Role Model. He had an album that just came out and they had a very publicized uh, yet private at the same time relationship for, I think they did for three years and they broke up and everybody was pretty shocked, but we're going to look at the birth charts and see what happened. So this is a jam-packed episode and we're going to have a lot of fun. So stick around. Okay. Cheers to Gemini season. I hope everybody is doing amazing. I hope you guys are feeling the shift. So uh, Gemini season, of course, <laughs> it's coming in hot. You know, it's packing a punch. Gemini is ruled by Mercury and Mercury moves quickly. It's all about thinking, communication. So I'm really not surprised that Gemini kicked off the 2024 season with a major bang. Let's get those calendars out. The very beginning of Gemini season, we have Venus in Gemini, which started on May 23rd and will last until June 17th. And then just a couple days later, we had Jupiter moving into Gemini to stay for one year. And that happened on May 25th. And that will continue until June 9th of 2025. And the actual Gemini season dates are May 20th through June 20th. So like I said, very packed in the front end there, <laughs> but we would expect nothing less from Gemini, would we? A couple of other things to note on that cosmic calendar, Mercury moving into Gemini from June 3rd through June 17th, Mercury in its home sign right there next to Venus and Jupiter. You guys, I'm telling you, this is so positive. This Gemini season is such an uplifting energy. I'm going to explain what these things mean, but I just want us to write them down so we have them, put them in your notebook, put them in your notes app. Gemini new moon, June 6th very positive new moon with all of this good energy right next to it. So this is such a great time to embrace your inner Gemini. And I want you to look at the house ruled by Gemini in your birth chart. That's going to tell you a lot about where you're going to have all these gifts and all of this good stuff happening. So just like every Zodiac sign season, right? Wherever the sun is at, wherever it's illuminating, it is shining a light on that part of your life. I'll use myself as an example. Gemini rules my fifth house of creativity. And I've already told you guys during the live stream, I've been feeling super creative. I've been wanting to try all different types of things. And so that's what's happening for me. And I'm of course really excited because the fifth house of creativity, children, love, all those positive things, your inner child, uh, that's lit up with Jupiter, Venus, and then later joined by Mercury and a new moon on June 6th. So this is really positive. So let's talk a little bit more about what these different things mean, and then we'll move on to smelling a little bit of tea. And I'll give you guys some tips too. I have some Gemini season tips that I've compiled to help us make the most of this good energy. Okay. So first of all, Jupiter and Gemini, I'm doing a whole separate video about this because it's very, it's, it's lasting for a full year. So it's a big deal, but just a little taster. Again, that part of your life that is ruled by Gemini, whichever house rules Gemini in your birth chart, uh, we use the whole sign system. You can go to astrocharts.com. If you need to pull up a free birth chart and make sure that you go to settings, whole sign, because Placidus is the default, but a whole sign is my favorite. It's the easiest to use and it'll give you very clear cut houses. So you'll know which house is ruled by which zodiac sign. You're going to scroll to the bottom of the page and there you have it. It will tell you which house is ruled by Gemini. The thing about Jupiter is that Jupiter takes one full year to make its way all the way around the wheel. And so every single year, basically Jupiter blesses a different sign. And that sign gets extra luck, 
beauty, special treatment. It's a year of expansion for that zodiac sign and for the part of all of our birth charts that are ruled by that zodiac sign. So this past year and where Jupiter has been for the past year up until it moved into Gemini on May 23rd was Taurus. So we saw a lot of Taurus people rising to prominence during that transit. Taurus got one full year of blessings and one full year of just really shining and basking in the light of Jupiter's gifts, luck, abundance, and expansion. And one person in the media that really comes to mind when I think about this transit, astrology in the wild moment, you guys. So we talk about Trisha Paytas on this channel sometimes because that's one of my guilty pleasure shows, the Just Trish podcast. And I love Oscar. And like, I just, it's one of those things that I just will turn on and, you know, my background and it'll just make me kind of happy, make me giggle. And she is a Taurus son. She always talks about that. I would love to do her birth chart for her. Oh my gosh, manifesting. But she is a Taurus son and she is known for having a huge comeback year over this past year. And it coincided with the transit of Jupiter in Taurus. So you can even go to her YouTube channel and you can scroll back and you can see when her luck started to change. And by luck, I mean when Just Trish, her podcast really started to take off. I was one of the first people to join Patreon. So I definitely was watching it from the beginning. And I knew as soon as it started to kind of get a little bit of uh, momentum, I looked up her birth chart and I saw that she's a Taurus sun. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a huge year for her. And it has been. She signed with an agency, which is something she's been wanting to do forever. She is having another baby. She has talked about how Jess Trish, this podcast is everything. It's everything she ever wanted. It's finally come together. She went through kind of what, what people will call like a flop era, I guess. Um, but it's just her stuff wasn't really picking up as much. And something kicked in. When Jupiter entered Taurus, it all came together. So if you were a Gemini sun, moon, or rising, just know that this is going to be a really positive year for you and you want to make the most of it. Expect the best because the best is what's coming to you. So just be open. Also, whichever house, because this is going to happen to all of us, whichever house is ruled by Gemini in your birth chart, you're going to get essentially a glow up there. Let's talk about the glow up and where this is going to happen for everybody. You're going to see it. Like this is not something that is going to be hard to notice. For example, if you want to look back and see what you experienced this past transit to kind of get a little bit of like verification, like I love to do that. You know, it's fun to see like, well, how did the last transit affect me? Look back at whichever house in your birth chart is ruled by Taurus. Think about the glow up. What glow up did you have? in that part of your life over this past year. Like, I'll tell you what I had. When Jupiter moved into Taurus, Taurus is my house of, my fourth house of home and family. And we adopted, let's see, two dogs. We, I rescued two shelter dogs. And I'll tell you guys, just this past weekend, everything finally clicked into place. At the end of this Jupiter transit, I was telling my husband, Michael, I am so happy at home right now. Like all the dogs finally get along. They've been trained like, and it's been a long road, but I feel like we had a glow up. I've had a glow up personally in my home life. Like I feel very happy at home. This is kind of like what I always wanted. We have been, you know, getting things situated in the house, doing a little bit of redecorating. And I really feel like when Jupiter left, it was like that part was settled. I was like, okay, I feel good about this part of my life. Like we feel good and I am ready to move on to the next house. So that's the thing also, you may be called to spend more energy in that part of your life because it may be a source of just like blessings and fun. And so you might just be more drawn to that part of your, your life than usual, whichever house is ruled by, you know, where this Jupiter transit is. I would just embrace it, lean into it. And get ready for the new blessings because Gemini has, you know, the Gemini part of your life has all new blessings coming your way, which I love that. I love following Jupiter around, <laughs> around the wheel because it's just so fun. Like we get new blessings every year. Like, okay, thanks Jupiter. All right. So that is what's going on with 
Jupiter and Gemini, again, like I said, I'm doing a whole nother members only video about that where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be making like celebrity predictions based on celebrities' birth charts that we have like a known birth time, like Selena Gomez, Justin Bieber. Um, and we're going to look at how the transit of Taurus, uh, of Jupiter and Taurus affected them. And it's very dead on. It's exciting. You guys are going to see. Okay. Next, we have Venus in Gemini, May 23rd through June 17th, like I mentioned. And Venus, when Venus is Gemini, it just dictates the style, you know, what's in, what's interesting. And we are going to hear from Emma Chamberlain to talk about, um, you know, just the essence of Gemini. Like, what is, what is Gemini style? How do Geminis dress? And if we wanted to dress that way and channel the season, what should we be wearing? Mercury in Gemini, very similar. Um, Mercury is all about moving quickly. Mercury is ruled by Gemini. It is at home in Gemini. It's about quick communication, being able to take something that you know and give it to other people. The interesting thing about Gemini and Virgo, who are both zodiac signs ruled by Mercury, is that Gemini is the outward expression of Mercury and Virgo is the inward expression of Mercury. So what I mean is they're the same, basically they're the same, but Gemini's will just tell you everything. And like, I can always spot a Gemini from a mile away. And I find their energy really refreshing and uplifting because they don't hold anything back. Like, I feel like what you see is what you get. They always make me giggle because they have like a hundred different ideas about things that, you know, maybe other people wouldn't say out loud. And I find identifying a Gemini in a crowd, one of the easiest Zodiac signs to pick out in addition to Aries and Leo. Like, I really feel like I can see those people and I can like, t I can tell you. I'm be like, okay, that person's gotta be a Gemini or that person has to be an Aries. There's just something very distinct about their personalities, the way they carry themselves. Uh, but Gemini, I've always thought that. So the reason it's so easy to spot a Gemini is because they have this very distinct trait of just talking a lot. Like they'll talk and they'll tell you things and they're fun and they're uplifting and they're sprightly and they don't tend to go too deep with things. They keep things fun and flirty. And that is Venus and Gemini. That is Mercury and Gemini as well. So when those planets are there, they're going to be at home and there's going to be a bigger emphasis on Gemini energy. So the advice for this very Gemini packed time of our lives is just to embrace communication, don't be afraid to open up a little bit more. Don't take things quite as seriously. You know, keep it casual if you can, while also speaking your truth. You know, tell people how you really feel without going too deep into it. And if you want to know truly like what the Gemini energy is like, and if you want to get a little bit of inspiration to try that on, watch Emma, Cham Emma Chamberlain vlogs, like the older ones. I'd say like the past, like maybe go back two, three years, or even like her really early ones where she's just pure Gemini essence. Um, her later ones, I feel like she's definitely maturing and maybe leaning a little bit more into different parts of her birth chart because, you know, she's in the fashion world and it's just, it's different. But I feel like when she's her truest essence, when she's younger and also just like a few years back before she maybe got more into like the fashion world and, and grew up a little bit, um, you can see this pure Gemini energy of just her being a cute, funny little chatterbox. And I, I love her channel. I've loved it for so long. Like I just find her adorable. Um, okay. So you re reconnect with your friends and family. This is such a good time to like talk to people that you haven't talked to in a while, you know, pick up the phone, give people a call. Mercury rules Gemini. And especially when Venus enters Gemini, which, oh, it's already there. Hold on. <laughs> because it entered on the 23rd. So with Venus there, Venus is going to sweeten our communication. It's going to make communication run more smoothly. So if there is somebody that you're like, oh my gosh, I've been meaning to talk to them, or I really need to text them back, or I really need to call them back, do it go for it. This is a great time to do that and to just, you know, reestablish these connections. It's also a good time to improve things that are ruled by Gemini, which include communication skills, like your reading, writing, take a class, um, work on a project. Like if you've ever wanted to write a book or write your own workbook or like do something that has to do with communication, now is a great time because we're all just more open to that type of communication and energy and we value innovation and connection right now, which is really great. This is also a good time to stay curious, be more open-minded if you can, just lean in to new hobbies, interests. This is a good time to read books, read different articles, 
think about getting out there as much as you can as far as like information, learn. It's also a fun time to like indulge in some pop culture stuff because Gemini does like to also keep things lighthearted. This is a great time to, you know, network, to be social, to go to events, to invite people over. Think about just a little energizer bunny who is trying new things, going different places, keeping it light, having fun. That is Gemini energy. And it's not a bad persona to try on for a month. I feel like it can be very refreshing and kind of pushes you to like take a little bit of the pressure off of yourself and just have fun, especially for us, for us with like, um, more like earth or like water sign placements, like let yourself lay back, you know, put your feet up like a Gemini for a month. See how you like it. I bet you will. Okay. <laughs> During this playful, fun, positive, hyperactive, <laughs> expressive time of year, we need to know what to wear while we are indulging in all these shenanigans, right? You guys, while we're having fun being the social butterflies, the Heidi Klum of our own party, we need to have the right outfit, right? So the lucky colors this season include yellow, orange, blue, and green. And I did promise you guys a clip of Emma Chamberlain talking about her fashion sense. And as a Gemini, she would know. And as a Gemini who's a Vogue correspondent, she would definitely know. So let's roll that clip. <laughs> this is from her YouTube channel and it, all the credit goes to her video. Okay. And this is from her video, LA morning routine, LOL. Like you guys, it's so Gemini. Roll that beautiful bean footage. I'm having kind of a fashion dilemma, okay? Because part of me is like, Emma, you wanna be minimalist. You want to literally just wear jeans and a white t-shirt every day and call it a day. But then on the other hand, I'm like, I want to step up my style and have like a crazy unique style that nobody's ever seen before. And I wanna create something new, but I don't really know if I have it in me. Right now I would say my fashion philosophy is very much like whatever I'm feeling in the moment. It may not be extravagant, it may not be groundbreaking, and, and I'm more, and I don't want, I don't need it to be all the time. Like, I feel like there's this pressure for everybody to like do groundbreaking things with their fashion sense. And I'm like, it just doesn't need to be that complicated. If you dress to quote unquote fit in, then you're boring. But then if you dress kind of more eccentrically, eccentrically, then it's like, some people are like, you look fucking stupid. So it's like, what are you supposed to do? Like there's, I don't know. That's why I'm like, maybe I just need to do the whole white tank top and fucking jeans thing and just wear that every day for the rest of my life and never have to think about clothes again, you know? So I think that the moral of the story is I'm just not gonna listen to what anybody else ever has to say and I'm just gonna have fun. So that's kind of what's going on here. The main thing that she was expressing about her personal style, AKA the personal style of a Gemini and our Gemini season style inspiration with Venus and Gemini is just to not really care, to do what you want, march to the beat of your own drum, mix and match. One day it might be this, the next day it might be that because Mercury is moving all over the place and as the ruler of Gemini, Gemini takes on the traits of Mercury. So it's like, wear what you want, allow yourself to change with the cha like changing trends, try new things. That's the other thing about Gemini style. They are known for trying a new trend like immediately and then dropping it. You know, like they're the first to try it. They're the first to drop it, which is fine because that's what it's about. It's about having fun, experimenting and really seeing like what the, you know, the zeitgeist of the current times is. Gemini rules pop culture and like living in the now and embracing like what is new. So I just, I love it. I think it's very fun. So really anything goes, which coincidentally is the name of her podcast. So anything goes, wear what you want, have fun, mix and match, wear the Gemini season colors. If you want a little bit of extra luck, you know, maybe mix and match a blue striped, like uh, dress with a little, you know, a little with a yellow shoe. I don't know, like get a little wild with it. Let yourself go crazy. Pops of color are great. Um, Emma is also a brand ambassador and has partnerships with different brands that I find a little bit quirky, which is very Gemini. Gemini is stylish, but also a little bit of like a little bit quirky, like with their own spin on things. You know, Gemini has its own slightly intellectual take on everything, even fashion, because of the mercurial ruling. She is a brand ambassador for Miu Miu 
which is like the little sister of Prada, uh, Louis Vuitton, Gucci. So she's like done ads. She's done all these things. And the brands that she works with, it's more like the quirky, innovative, like younger sister that is mixing and matching, but like cool, but effortlessly cool at the same time. And that's Gemini, effortlessly cool. Okay, I love it. So now let's spill a little bit of tea and look into Emma's breakup. This breakup hit me hard personally, and I'll tell you why. Because if you just look at the two of them, I have their picture on screen. You guys see, I mean, they are just, they are alike. Some people just seem like they go together. You know what I mean? And these two really did. And the more that I learned about him, the more I was like, oh my gosh, they are just meant to be. So he started off as like a rapper and now he's a singer. I actually love his songs. And he's of course like written songs about Emma. You've got to go check them out. Um, oh, Gemini. A little more time. I love that one. That was from when they were together. That's just how it goes. Hello. That one's like beautiful. Okay. Anyway, I love, I like have become a fan of role model through finding him through Emma. And sadly, I kind of looked more into him when I found it, like they broke up. So this is what happened. They broke up. He went on the Zach Sang show to promote his latest album. The newer song that's really sad. You guys is deeply still in love. And the album is called Kansas Anymore. Okay, so good. Definitely want to follow him on Spotify. The breakup, I don't really know. It could have come from him being homesick. That's basically what he alluded to in his, and he, he kind of said, he didn't just allude to it. He said in his interview with Zach Sang on the Zach Sang show, when he was asked about the breakup, he said, The thing is, is like, I knew I was, I knew there were th things that were, problematic while I was doing them and I would say that too like I was very weirdly communi communi communicative about that <laughs> um and I was just you know like going home a lot um and kind of again like creating space and like leaving LA a lot and not really having a reason why to tell that person. And for me, it was just to like get out and go home. I was very homesick too, and that was a huge part of it. And I just wanted to go home alone and be with my friends and my family and like have some normalcy. Um, and I think that would be very confusing for the other person. I think it's like, why are you running away from me? Which wasn't really the thing. I was just, I think that'd be confusing. And um, yeah. Um, yeah. It seemed to me like he was talking about it being more of like a right person, wrong time type of thing. And kind of putting it on himself. And if you listen to the song Deeply Still in Love about Emma, which she said was about Emma, um, you'll it, you'll realize that, okay, he definitely was the one that, you know, I think he's the one that kind of messed it up or wh whatever with his own issues. Life's a learning lesson, of course. But he kind of messed it up, essentially. And he's still in love with her, you know? Let's, let's just look at the birth charts. Here are Tucker Pillsbury's placements. We're going to use his birth name. He has his son in Taurus, moon in Virgo, Mercury in Taurus. Oh my gosh, you guys. Venus in Gemini. No wonder he's in love with her. Venus, deeply still in love. Oh, Gemini, the song. With Venus and Gemini, like she is what he is attracted to. And I can't even believe, like, he has, I have chills. Can't even believe, like, she, he has a song called Oh Gemini, Deeply Still in Love. Like, yeah, his Venus is at six degrees Gemini. So for him, she really is, like, his ideal. Um, but with his Mercury and Taurus at one degree, so one degree is the degree of Aries, and Taurus is the degree of the bull, Taurus. Taurus people are known to move slowly. Also, they can be homebodies, him being homesick. There can be a certain like laziness or lackadaisicalness like on the negative side. So lazy communication with Mercury and Taurus, I could totally see it. Also, 
more like slow moving and needing rest, needing downtime. So maybe, you know, not really being able to communicate all the time, needing space and time to just like kind of go slow and relax and not think about a lot of things, very Mercury and Taurus. And one degree associated with Aries, that is a very independent degree. So that actually doesn't surprise me now that we see his birth chart that he said that part of the issue was his communication style and his desire to spend more alone time than even he thought was healthy for a relationship. There you go. Okay, moving right along. Uh, Mars in Virgo. So, okay, Moon and Mars in Virgo. Very interesting. Jupiter in Aquarius. Saturn in Aries. Uranus in Aquarius. Neptune in Capricorn. Pluto in Sagittarius. North Node Virgo. Chiron in Libra, the sign of partnership. So, painful partnerships, painful breakups with Chiron and Libra. That's part of it. Part of what he's learning to do is learning how to harmonize with another person. So that makes sense as well. And if we look at her birth chart to compare, her Mercury is at home in Gemini. So for, oh my God, you guys. So for Emma to have her Mercury in Gemini along with her son in Gemini, and she does have her Venus in Aries though. So like when they communicate, there's probably like a part of them that can communicate well because she does have her um, Venus in Aries. So there's like a part of her like gets him like romantically and like with their romantic communication with his one degree Mercury, but she has Venus in Aries and Mercury in Gemini. So she's like moving quick or moving quicker when it comes to communication and knowing what she wants in love and like out of a partnership. This is someone who's very like full on. Like when they turn, when they are like ready to commit and they're all in, they're all in and they don't understand what the confusion would be. So I just got goosebumps confirmation. I feel like it would be so hard for someone with, and you know, it's just life. It's not necessarily right or wrong. No one, I mean, it seems like this would be difficult because they just don't really speak the same language. So with her Venus in Aries and his Venus in Gemini, lots of attraction, you know, fire with his air sign, Venus in Gemini, wind fans the flames. So like lots of romance, definitely like started off very uh, romantic and you can really see that they were very in love, which is, I think that's why it's so sad to see that they broke up and why I wanted to look at their charts. Um, so you can definitely see the love, the connection. And she also has like her Jupiter in Gemini and wow, her Saturn in Gemini. She has a lot of Gemini and his Venus attracted to all of those parts of her. So you can definitely see why he would be so in love and you can definitely see why she would feel so loved and appreciated and also reciprocate that feeling. I see, oh my gosh, you guys, and their moons. He has moon in Virgo, she has moon in Taurus. They both have earth sign moons. So they have the same feeling of loyalty and being grounded. Um, this is a couple that once they commit, like they're really committed. You don't have to worry about that they didn't have to worry about each other with like cheating or things like that. Um, Taurus and Virgo are extremely compatible. And for their moon signs to be there emotionally, both completely understand what the other one needs. This on paper is such, I'm getting goosebumps you guys, it's such a good match. So when you have, I mean, we do see a little bit of an issue, like I said, with the communication, which he mentioned in that interview, we do see with his Mercury and Taurus and her Mercury and Gemini that there's like no common ground there. I mean, in my opinion. I do not see a common ground there. Um, it, it just, it doesn't make sense to me because Taurus, like I said, is that slow, languishing, slightly stubborn energy and Mercury is, um, and Gemini is like moving quickly and thinking quickly. And by the way, it makes so much sense that she's such a successful YouTuber and has been for so long and just watch a few of her videos, the way she articulates her feelings immediately, like everything is out there because she has Mercury and Gemini, her Mercury is at home. So that is the pure expression of Gemini energy. So she was always destined to be a great communicator, to be a, you know, a social media personality, um, a celebrity, a star. Now she interviews people on the red carpet. So definitely this makes sense looking at her chart. Now, when things get complicated like this and you just can't see, you still can't see why it didn't work out because on paper, on paper, it makes sense. You're like, wait, these, but these two should have been able to work it out. Of course, we have to do a past life 
love calculator. <laughs> so I pulled out my handy dandy Jan Spiller book, Cosmic Love, highly recommend. And I entered in their birth information. We don't have their birth times. So this is just like a sunrise chart, which is what they do over at Jan Spiller. But we're going to get a lot of good information. Still, we don't necessarily have to have the birth time for this. So let's let's just dive into it. Let's start with the um, North Nodes because that's important. Emma, <laughs> Emma is a Cancer North Node person and role model is a Virgo North Node person, Tucker. Uh, role models. Virgo and Cancer, very compatible. Extremely. My my brother is a Cancer. I'm a Virgo. We're like best friends. Very well known that these two signs are compatible. They're both nurturing. Um, they get along really well. They have similar a similar understanding of like the world and what they need. So these two could actually help each other on their movement towards, you know, what they're becoming in this life. It's not the kind of situation where they're too similar. It's honestly like that would be perfect. Like a Cancer North node and a Virgo North node, amazing. Like brave friends and partners as they overcome the obstacles and like make it through to their North node. So we continue on. This I found interesting. Um, they actually have no past life contracts. So they have no North node conjunctions and they have no South node conjunctions. Fun fact, my husband and I also have this in our past life um, birth chart reading. And I've, I've not seen other people with like none. And so I looked into it, obviously, because I was like, what the heck? Why do we have nothing like no past, no future? Um, but what it means is that you actually have a clean slate with the other soul. So and and I don't know what exactly it could be. I my theory that I came up with is that it could even be like a twin soul type of thing, like a twin twin flame or a twin soul, or like a true soulmate or something, because you're drawn together with this, with another person and things like work out and you help each other and like it's a good positive relationship. Like my relationship with my husband is like no other relationship that I've had in this lifetime, and. It, I think that the fact that there's like no past karma to work out and then there's no like North node energy either. I definitely feel like it's about you being able to independently turn the relationship into whatever you want. And it's that clean slate energy. I don't know. I feel like it could be a sign of like a, a soul contract or not a soul contract, um, like a twin flame, like two halves of one whole. So it's possible that these two could get back together. I know, controversial. It's possible that these two could get back together in the future based on that alone. Um, if not, maybe this lifetime formed a, a future soul contract between the two of them, like a North Node connection, Venus North Node, something for their next lifetime. But um, I would be really surprised if they didn't at least give it one more try with with like the no past life and no future karma. I just think it's it could be a twin flame thing. Okay. And then the gifts. So every time you do this, you get to see like which gifts you bring to someone and which gifts they bring to you. So role model or Tucker brings Emma gifts in her fourth house. So that's a huge deal because like the fourth house is like where we feel at home, you know, it represents our home and like our foundation. So the fact that he brings Emma the sense of home, comfort, and stability, especially with her Taurus moon, which is ruled by, uh, like, I don't know. That's huge. That's huge. You guys. So Taurus loves, you know, the fourth house, cozy energy of stability and feeling like you've got those four walls to protect you. And he brings her the gift there. So when she's with him, she feels like she's at home and she feels like she has this stability and this safety and comfort that she's never had. And actually what's funny is I saw a quote somewhere where I believe it was Tucker that said it, but it could have been Emma. Honestly, I confuse them because they, in quotes, because it could be attributed to either person because they're so alike. I'm telling you, I have a twin flame theory now about these two. Uh, just, just developed it right now. He said something about how it's very safe how their relationship just feels safe, and positive, and good. And that makes sense that he brings her fourth house gifts. And then the gifts that Emma brings to Tucker, this is really interesting. So Emma actually has her North Node bringing gifts and falling in at Tucker's second house of earned income and self-esteem, self-worth, which is in, you know, in 
just general astrology, the second house is naturally ruled by Taurus. So anyway, they're just they're very like compatible. It's very weird how much it's just like the same energy. It's like give and take, very equal like exchange of energies. But the second house is about uh, money and like like financial well-being, financial gain, and also that self-worth. So this would mean that she helped to like validate him, validate who he is. And then on like another note, songs like Oh Gemini and – you know, deeply still in love and songs that we know are about Emma Chamberlain who has 12 million YouTube subscribers. Like that brings people to his YouTube channel. It brings people to his music, which makes him money, which is the second house, right? So I definitely, it's very like, you can see it like a material gain thing. I mean, I found him through Emma. So that's what she, she's here to kind of do for him in this lifetime, you know, help him to fuel his finances and to find recognition. He was first signed with a label, like I think back in like 2017. And so he's been doing this for long, like quite a while. And he, you know, he had some albums come out and like, I think that this is going to be as big as yet. And I don't, you know, I think that it's due to him, but I also think that like being with Emma and being associated with her has helped to bring a bigger audience to his music, which definitely is going to make him money. So that checks out. But that is the T on those two. Um, I could do a tarot reading in one of our live sessions on them to check them out more if you want more info. But for now, I think I'm going to leave it at that. And I hope that everybody has just the most lovely, perfect Gemini season. We will talk about that new moon on June 6th. So we get a little bit closer to it. We'll manifest and do some things, but just have that circle on your calendar because that's going to be a fresh new positive start in that house in your birth chart ruled by Gemini. But yeah, let's do this. Until then, time to have some fun, be a little more lighthearted, make some new friends, communicate, try some new hobbies, do all the things, be all the places, sleep when you're dead type of energy. All right, you guys, I love you. And I will see you, of course, more this Gemini season. All right.